Welcome to a new episode of Ausfahrt TV in English. Ausfahrt TV, by the way, means exit in German and it's not as far. I'm Mr. Z, your host, and I'm very sorry for all my strong accent Z's in between. Anyhow, I'm presenting you today a French car, so bonjour mes amis. Citroën presented the Cactus concept car at the IAA in Frankfurt 2013. And when they showed the production model in Geneva 2014, I was surprised how close it is to the concept car. It is a compact SUV something style. Citroën is very proud that they did something very extraordinary. And if you followed the history of Citroën, you know that their cars are not the most sold cars, but very impressive cars. Or they had very impressive cars in the past. For instance, the De Cheveux, the um, DS, and the six for example we have two citroen c4 cactus uh, right here that i can present you today uh, the yellow one the color by the way it's hello yellow uh, has an automatic transmission and the dark one has a manual transmission uh, the differences between the manual transmission and the automatic transmission are most likely uh, be visible in the interior, but I will stick with the yellow model for now and just point out some differences later on. So why in the world would a car manufacturer call a car cactus or cactus? I mean, it's a plant that lives in the desert. Um, first of all, the word cactus or cactus is um, understandable in about 50 different languages. So wherever you talk about this car, everyone should know what car you're talking about. This is pretty nice. And then Citroën tried to keep the cactus very simple. They said they wanted to reduce everything from the outside and the inside to the very max. They want to have a simple car that is um, not too expensive and that is easy to drive. And as you know, a cactus doesn't need much water, so they wanted to reduce uh, fuel consumption as well. A cactus is uh, very uh, robust. So this car has something very neat. Citroën call it air bombs. That's the thing that you see on the side as well on the back and on the front. And to be simple, it's sort of an air cushion. So if you hit against it, the air just, you know, inflates a little bit and you don't scratch your paint. And especially if you have been in Paris just one time, you've seen how cars park there, how tight the whole traffic is. And so if you open the door, for instance, and you hit another car, you have a protection right here or even better, if someone else opens the door and slams against your car, nothing uh, is uh, damaged. Citroën provides a C4 Cactus with the various engines, uh, some petrol and some diesel engines. As you might know, we Germans, we all crazy about diesel engines, so I'm happy that we have a 1.6 liter turbo diesel engine in here. The engine provides us 92 horsepower and gives us a maximum torque of 230 newton meters, which should be enough for this compact SUV, whatever it is. Besides, a uh, spokesman of Citroën told me that they say that no car needs more than 100 horsepower. Well, I'm German, we have the Autobahn, so I have a slightly different opinion to that. But I'm still curious how this little cactus will drive and how the acceleration feels. I'm really wondering, um, do you, my spectator, really think that the exterior of the cactus is so much different from what we know now because I don't think so. Um, if you look at the front we have the LED daylights right here but that's you know what every Citroen comes with now and by the way the regular uh, light is just normal H4 and um, 
Yes, we have different combinations of color here. We have the uh, black plastics that is supposed to protect the car. We have the yellow paint and some uh, white applications at the mirror caps and at the lines on the roof. And by the way, we have a front wheel drive. It's not an all wheel drive and even if it's an SUV like car, it won't be available with an all wheel drive. And uh, no, it's not right that you can put the car on the roof to slide down the hill even it looks like skis. So before I show you the interior which I consider to be very nice and very futuristic I would like to push the car right there because here a bunch of wasp and I, I'm kind of scared that they will bite me. Even on the back you have those plastic applications that are supposed to protect the car from scratches when you know people come by with a bicycle and you know hit your car or something pushes the card at the supermarket against your car and um, I kind of like how they s uh, have this um, Citroen badge here come out so you can really feel it. Anyhow, let's have a look at the trunk. Um, we have storage here for 348 liters and I like to show you what we got in here. There's a backpack. <coughs> Carry on luggage number one, carry on luggage number two, and our huge tripod case. So um, it's not enough space, I guess, for a whole family of four people to uh, have a 14 days vacation somewhere else. But you have enough space for at least, you know, put all your groceries in there and, well, drive to the airport or whatever. At this point you can only order the C4 Cactus uh, with a backrest that you can flip in one part. So later on they will provide a um, backrest that is split it 60-40 but right now it's just this model right here and you get a volumina of 1170 liters um, that you can fill and as you can see you don't have a plain surface for one thing and uh, what you can see but I measured it you can put in luggage up to 150 centimeters. Well keeping things simple with a Citroen C4 Cactus even with a price tag. The Cactus will start at 13,990 euros at least in Germany different markets, different prices. You might want to ask your local dealer for your price. Our test car right here costs around 23,000 euros. So you get an idea that it's 10,000 euros over the basis price. Um, you have certain options like the engine, the transmission and so on that you can fit in the car. By the way, I know a bunch of women who tell me there are no women cars, that's you know, that's not nice to say. Still, I would say as a Cactus as a car specially made for women, but then I saw a sort of concept based on the production model that was presented in Geneva that was like an outdoor fun car with a GoPro on the front, big ass tires that really was male. So whenever I look at even this car in Hello Yellow, uh, I have the, the other car in mind so um, I don't think it's a female car at all. Um, Let's have a look at the interior now that I really like and enjoy um, and I would invite you to follow me inside. By the way, getting in the car is really easy of course because you have an SUV style car so it's easy to get in. The door opens wide enough even for bigger people to get in and it's not wide too wide so you can easily grab the door handle and close the door. Before I give you my first impression about this car I have to point out something that I really consider to be really 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 cool. When I pull up the armrest you can see it. Uh, they put a cushion between the two front seats uh, so it feels like a front row. Of course we have two separate seats and that's just a little cushion but still it you know it feels like back in time where you used to have a real row where three people could sit. As you can see here easily no there's not space for a third 
person anyhow and I do like this armrest as well because I think it looks stylish and it's very comfortable as well I have to tell you that this combination is only available with the automatic transmission once you choose the manual transmission you have a complete different design in this area here so uh, let me go on my first impression when I got into the car it feels spacious the windshield is very far away I have just a few things that disturb me from all the rooms that I have in here and it feels really good the second impression is that the seats really feel like a Citroen I know uh, I don't know if you know that I'm a big Citroen fan. I have an old DS at home and um, for me, for my personal uh, feeling, Citroen stands for very, very comfortable seats, you know, that you sit like on a sofa and even those seats uh, don't, uh, by the way, they don't give you any side support whatsoever, even it looks a little bit like that. Um, those seats, you sit in there and you kind of sink a little bit in them. It still feels like a little sofa, very, very comfortable. I like it. Um, Anyhow, reduced to the max, that's, you know, the, the topic of the whole car. So, as you can see, we have a little display right here and a bigger display right there. The first display just gives you very, very reduced information. You get your speed, your current speed. You get an information how much fuel is still in the tank. Uh, by the way, we have a 50 liter tank and the fuel consumption, uh, at least the trend says, it's like 3.4 liters on 100 kilometers, which is amazing. Even if you double it, you still have a good um, value. So we have uh, the, the, how much the gas is still in the tanks, the speed, and uh, the gear you're driving in right now. There's no RPM whatsoever, which is not too bad, I think, for an automatic transmission. But once you shift uh, manually, you might want, to, yeah, you might miss it. I don't know. I think RPMs are overrated overall if you don't drive a really sporty car. Um, all the other informations you get on this infotainment display and as you can see there are not very many buttons, it's just four buttons right here and a little bit of buttons at the flat button steering wheel which is covered with leather by the way and um, so you use this display as the center of your information. Um, while I was driving already, you know, during my test drive, I thought, well, you know, you, you probably have to get used to it because you, it's a touch screen and, you know, touch screen are kind of cool, but if they don't react, you know, suddenly, you kind of, you know, it distracts you from driving, whatever you do here. So even if you want to change the climate in the car, you, you know, you have to press around here and, and do all the, the options and that's kind of disturbing from the driving itself. Um, a funny thing, by the way, really funny, you have uh, shifting pedals, I mean, you know, 92 diesel uh, horsepower and uh, that's not really w what you need. By the way, we have an automatic transmission. Uh, if you have ever driven a smart, you know what I'm talking about, you know, nodding your head, so it's not a DSG or uh, anything else, uh, the automatic uses or, or the automatic puts the gear in for you and uh, so whenever it shifts for you you kind of nod your head unless you practice a little bit of driving and you know how to use uh, the throttle to uh, avoid this nodding. I don't like it too much to be honest. Um, I like Citroen, I like this car, so I'm trying to, you know, get over this topic. But um, if you consider buying a Citroen with a manual transmission, uh, with, a, with the automatic transmission, you really should go for a long test drive to feel that this car is, is, is ready for you. Citroen claims, well, this sort of automatic transmission has the advantage of being lightweight, being not very expensive and uh, helping you to reduce your fuel consumption. So that's why they put this sort of automatic transmission in here. 
Okay, let me walk through the compartments real quick. Um, as you seen already, the armrest is nothing else but an armrest. I have a compartment in the door that fits uh, one liter bottle at least, uh, but you have to lay it in the door panel because it doesn't stand in there. Uh, by the way, this futuristic handle right here is the parking brake. In front of the parking brake we have one and just one cup holder and a little compartment where you can put your keys or whatever. Uh, over well this right here is to put in the driving modes. We have drive, reverse and neutral of course. Uh, over there I put my iPhone so I think it's made for my iPhone actually. We have a 12 volt outlet and an USB uh, port that you know hooks up your phone your smartphone to the infotainment system as well and we have a gloves compartment which Citroen claims is really huge you know they put the airbag for the passenger in the roof um, but it's not really that big I think and there you have an aux in and another USB port and you can by the way disable the passenger airbag if you want to uh, give your kids a ride on the front seat or you have a baby you know face the other way then you want to disable your airbag and uh, we have in the sun shields we have makeup mirrors on both sides in this car but if you take the cheapest version you don't get mirrors at all or just on the uh, driver's seat you have reading lights on both sides and um, that's about it i can tell you that the mirrors are kind of small the rear mirrors I consider their, their shape to be kind of sexy, you know, if you look. Um, and you see enough from the car, as well in the rear mirror. Well, the, the rear window is not really huge, but you see enough to uh, catch up with the traffic behind you. And if you turn your head, you have this uh, big thing in the back that you know, uh, provides you from seeing anything uh, in the, or everything in the rear, but still it's okay. And as an option, you get a, a rear camera that is gives you a sharp picture and helps you a lot while, you know, parking backwards. And even as an option, you get a parking assistant so you can uh, let the cactus park inside the slots all automatically. Reduced to the max as well on the rear seats. There's hardly anything I can show you and the disaster starts with the windows. We don't have windows that we can roll down. We just have the ability to open them just a little bit. I really don't appreciate this. Uh, Citroen says it's because of they wanted to reduce the weight and probably save some money. Besides that, we can put bottles in the side panels of the doors. We have uh, a little compartment here where you can hardly put anything in there. The whole uh, rear seat is just one surface. You don't have an armrest. There's nothing here, no lights, no nothing. Besides that, uh, I'm, um, as you know, I'm 5'11", 180 centimeters tall. I have enough headroom and there's a lot of space uh, for my legs. The seat is in a position that a six uh, foot tall person can sit there. So um, you have enough space, at least for two grown ups. Um, but uh, it's not a luxury ride in the back. Besides that, you sit kind of soft, so you have the Citroen feeling even in the back, sitting in the seats, uh, but as well you have no side support whatsoever. Okay, enough talking about exterior and interior. I will get on the road now with the Cactus and tell you about my driving experience. Put the mic away, let's go. So, a few words to my driving experience here in the uh, Citroën C4 Cactus. It drives. It's all I can say. Well, the brakes break, you know. 
and it feels okay for the weight the car has. Uh, the steering is of course not sporty direct but it still uh, gives you an all right feedback. So um, I don't complain about this. Uh, once you try to park the car it's easy enough so you don't have put too much effort in the steering wheel, too much strength in the steering wheel to um, maneuver the car in the parking lot. Um, the engine does not really feel like 92 horsepower to be honest. Um, it takes a while to accelerate and even if you try to kick down to really, you know, put your foot on the throttle and try to accelerate yeah you better you know watch the surrounding closely that you don't get yourself uh, in a situation that you don't like you need 11.4 seconds to accelerate uh, this car this engine from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour slash 62 miles and the top speed is limited to 176 kilometers per hour but of course we are not driving a race car and right now i'm on the autobahn going around 100 kilometers per hour it's a nice ride it's not too loud it's um well it's not all silent either but for the price you pay you get a really comfortable ride at least in my opinion. The suspension is nice. It's it's a French suspension without all the disadvantages. So um, you feel really comfortable, the suspension feels comfortable, but if you go on the curves, at least if you don't go very, very fast, the car is still good and stable and I feel secure driving it. I told you I'm not the biggest fan of the automatic transmission that is in here and um, I'm using the pedals right now to shift down third gear now I get even second gear now I'm accelerating and you see it shifts and you're nodding um, the trick is that you don't step on the throttle all the time but once you see that the car is um, shifting you kind of you know let your foot go from the toilet just a little bit and so you avoid the nodding. I'm not experienced in this very much so I'm nodding the whole time. No fun but I think once you buy the car and you drive with it for a longer period at least that's what I've been told you get used to it just like smart drivers they love their transmission as well. Just one word to the infotainment system and the speakers in the car. Uh, as long as you don't listen too loud to music or the music don't have too much bass inside like rhythm and blues or hip hop, they're doing an okay job for the whole car. Um, but especially loud bass is not working for the car at all or for the speakers. Uh, the whole feeling of the infotainment system is okay. I think it's not... I think it's alright, yeah. It's not too intuitive to use it, but once you played with the whole system just a little bit, you get along pretty well and reach the stuff that you need uh, with ease. Well, I hope you liked my little short review about the Citroen C4 Cactus. Um, if you have any questions about the car, let me know in the comments. I'm trying to answer them. And if you like this clip, please give me a like. I would highly appreciate it. I hope to see you soon in our next English clip. Goodbye. You can easily add up, uh, end up at 20 sous. 20 sous. 20 22,000. <laughs> okay, now it's uh, enough said. Let's go and get the car going. I'll put the microphone away and tell you what I think. Fuck. Cut. Normal. <clears throat> 
Okay, enough set. Fuck, ich krieg das nicht raus. Okay, it's time to get the cactus going. I will let you know what. Warte mal kurz. 24 km per hour. Um, 76. Nach 2,3 Kilometern an der Abzweigung rechts fahren. Uh, you need 11.1 km 